So it's actually pretty rare that one of uh, my finished pieces is something that I live with so I could actually be able to, to film in front of it. But this is what today's video is going to be about. It's not gonna be a multi-part series. It's just gonna be one video. It's a very simple build that I used with scrap um, in the shop. I ended up adding some lights around the edges, which I don't think is in the video, but I do mention it just because now that it's winter time, um, even though this room has skylights, um, they needed some sort of supplemental light. So far, the, these have worked well. I've only had them up for a couple of weeks, so I don't want to vouch for, for them, but I will put a link in the description for people um, that are interested. I kind of have always wanted to build one of these, and since this is an original exterior wall that is obviously now a sunroom, my shop is on the other side of this wall. And this is a good example of the type of brick I would never paint um, from people who watched last week's video. But um, this is covering an original exterior window, which they wanted covered. So this was kind of the way I came up with doing that. It's a very simple system. I kind of designed some plant holders that utilize French cleats on some, some spans of wood that have 45s on the back. So the whole thing, you don't need any sort of hardware. You just need to be able to make these slats as well as these plant holders. And then the whole thing can be moved and changed. And I'm planning on putting some more plants up here, but I wanna make sure that I kind of keep these alive before I start making too many um, additions. Now, obviously this is sunken into the wall because it's covering a window, but you could easily make something like this on a flat wall. Um, it sticks out enough that this, these French cleats wouldn't hit, uh, hit a wall in general anyways. So this is obviously that original window and I have a piece of drywall on the other side to, to protect the sound from going through that window. It's an older window, even though the windows on the house have been replaced, they, they did not replace this one for obvious reasons. So it has a couple different layers. Now I am using material I had in the shop. There's the back side of it so you could see what that looks like. So I kind of, I think I was an inch or two short because I had two shorter pieces of cedar that I wanted to use and lumber so expensive nowadays. I wanted to use that up. So I only had to buy one newer piece of cedar. So I mapped out the dimensions, I mapped out the spacing, and I kind of knew what I needed to cut down. And in order to do that, I had to put two edges on the window so that I would have enough width with the, the cedar in order to make that. So that was the first process. And I had to do this in order to use the lumber I had, but honestly, I kind of liked the way that framing worked out anyways. So there was some old glazing on the window that I also had to take out, which you'll see um, in a little bit. So for that, for the, sh the shims on the side, I have this older pine because I'm slowly fixing up this garage as well. You can see it's it's nice, the rings are nice and tight. So I had this laying around, I'm gonna cut that up so it matches the cedar a little bit better than newer two by fours. And like I said, I think I ended up going about an inch on this. So I'm just ripping these down. Uh, um, I put them on their edge so I didn't have to worry about taking the paint off. And like I said, I needed two of these, so this dimension worked out worked out nicely. Obviously, you could change this for, for what you're doing. So this is that old kind of window glaze that was on the edge, and it was making it so that my lumber wasn't flush. So this stuff, if it's old enough, it usually chips out pretty easily with a chisel, which is what I did. I just quickly removed that, and then you could see I have my two sides. I'm towing in some screws on the inside, similar to how you would attach pocket screws, so that you won't see them once everything's in place, but it's nice and sturdy um, to start with. So you could kind of get what, I'm, what I mean by, I, my boards would have been too short if I cut those planks in half. So I basically just shimmed out the two edges in order to be able to use this material. You could see there I'm cutting it in half. Um, all of my boards. I'm cutting them in rough dimension because this window is like most things is not square. It changes by about a quarter of an inch from top to bottom. So I'm rough cutting all of my pieces and then I could cut them down later. I'm ripping these in half and then I'm going to put the 45s on them. You can also just rip the 45s down the middle if you want to save a step, but this is how I decided to do it. So these are all of my pieces. 
I like cedar for many reasons, but one of the things I knew I was going to do was put a clear coat on this, and cedar just looks really nice when it's clear coated. And then I'm just putting a 45 on the edge. Like I said, you can rip these in half and make both 45s at one point instead of ripping them all into pieces, but this is kind of the process I went with with this. So that fingerboard I used to hold all these pieces close to, to the fence works really well um, in general, but sometimes you really have to crank down on those knobs to keep it from, from moving in the track. These are all the boards. And like I said, it was just a process of sending them all through. And once I had them, this went up very quickly. I used a simple spacer in order to get everything up. I did lightly sand all this stuff before I put it up so I wouldn't have to stand in the in the main house. But these boards, even though these are usually used for decking, they, they're pretty clean even from the box store. And then this is just showing how I could have just ripped it down the middle on a 45, save myself some time for people that want to want to do that. So for attaching these, I could have figured out a way to not have to use hardware, but honestly, I don't mind hardware um, on stuff like this. And I spent the time to center all of them on the edges. So when hardware is nice and uniform, I don't, I don't mind it. I think it looks nice. And then I wouldn't have to worry about um, spending a ton of time doing, doing fancy joinery. So all I'm doing is measuring the width and then I'm marking centers for the screw holes. Um, you can see I'm using an inch spacer, so these are spaced about an inch apart. And then I could countersink, and I'm using nice um, stainless steel screws on the edges, which I prefer if I'm going to have exposed hardware to have nice um, stainless steel ones versus drywall ones. And that was it. I just kept moving up, moving the jig up. Obviously, the 45 is pointing towards the, the ceiling at this point. Pretty simple process. I had this this whole project... I essentially, if I did it in one day, I could have done it in a day. This was mostly done by by the end of the day, just a matter of buying buying some plants. And it worked out perfectly that the spacing was, was just about perfect for the window. I didn't necessarily plan that. I was planning on trimming the one at the top, but it worked out that I didn't have to. And then I'm putting three coats of Osmo oil on this. I really like the look of Osmo oil. It also has a little bit of a water protectant in it because obviously these plants are gonna have to be watered. And um, I'm only gonna show one coat, but I end up putting, um, I lied, I put two on there. It also brings out the richness of the cedar, which over time will oxidate more and become a much richer color as well. So then I quickly made um, a French cleat out of some MDF. A French cleat is basically, um, you cut a 45 for the slats across the window, and there's gonna be a receiving 45 that will hang on there. Now my opening is an inch, so my cleat in the back cannot be any bigger than an inch. And in fact, it doesn't have to be the same dimension as the cedar. So this is half inch MDF I'm using, and I'm pretty happy with how that's gonna hold. So I have, a nicer grade of material. Um, this is half inch birch veneer ply and I'm just cutting a long strip of a 45 and I could use this to make all of my plant holders. Um, what you're gonna do with this is I made one strip, you can see this is it, and then the, the receiving end of the plywood will have a 45 on it as well and I could just rip that flat and get a bunch of, of um, 45s for, for making the French cleats. For the pots, I wanted the pots to sit about halfway down. So I just measured halfway on on the pots I was using and I cut out with the jigsaw. The jigsaw is not gonna leave the, the nicest edge, especially since this is an older jigsaw and I don't have a very thin blade for this. So it was hard to make the curve, but because the pots will be in it, you don't really notice if, if the circle isn't perfect. On smaller pots, you can use um, a hole saw. So then for the pieces that will connect it, once again, I'm using scrap. So I still had some cedar laying around and I'm gonna be, the plywood I'm cutting is three quarter inch plywood. So I'm just cutting a three quarter inch dado, essentially in the center of all of these pieces in order to receive the, the shelf that the plant will sit on. All of these measurements are not perfect. You can see I basically have it 
essentially in the center about halfway through the piece. For something like this, getting stuff dead on perfect, unless you really enjoy symmetry, is not super important. So then I can put some glue in there. You'll see how these plywood pieces will set in there. And glue's enough to hold this, but I'm a little impatient, so I end up screwing these on from the back because I wanted to see what they look like before the glue dried. There's my screws. And then you just attach the French cleat. So once again, I'm getting about centered without covering those screw holes in the back because I'm gonna be putting screws in these. So I could just tack it in place with some brads, countersink some screws, and then this is ready to go as well. And that is essentially all that these plant holders are. You change the style and design however you want. Obviously the plywood pieces coming out are all gonna change based on the, the plant size, but I wanted something very simple. It kind of blended in with the wall because the focal point are, are the plants. And that's how that goes on there. You can see how the cleat holds it up, but also the backer against the slats will, will help it from, from moving as well. And then this is before I change out the pot, but that's basically what it looks like. So then I went and got a bunch of, of pots and I started making a ton of these. They're easy to make and to mass produce them. But I ran into a problem where I started to, I was trying to make the pot holders as small as possible and the smaller pots were hitting the back. You could see how this one's far enough away from the back to to make it so the plant doesn't hit the back or there. I point that out so people don't make the same mistakes because like I said I don't have like set dimensions for this. I was basically just kind of going with the flow. I like doing projects that way but if you don't give yourself enough space, and one of the issues is these are the same brand of pots, but from two different Walmarts, because it's kind of hard finding pots at least this time of year. So they were different dimensions. So once I kind of uh, troubleshooted the fact that the plywood has to be a little bit farther off from the pot, I'm happy I figured that out before I made a bunch of these. I then have some cypress laying around the shop. This is actually cutoffs from a project I just finished. And I'm going to piece this out into a bunch of pieces for the backer. Um, I love projects like this. Stuff like these short, like 16 inch pieces and stuff, it's really hard to find projects to use this stuff with. They're usually cutoffs from bigger pieces. They're not big enough for, for large, um, for face frames or anything like that. So they kind of sit around my shop until I could find a use for them. So it's nice to be able to use these shorter pieces for stuff. And in order to fix that one I had, all I did was, was cut off the plywood and recut the dado groove and I could put um, new circles in there. So this is kind of the collection of plants I got from a, a farm stand. And then the pots, like I said, were some of them came from Walmart, some of them came from Home Depot. And then I just went through and made sure I had all of my diameters for the circles right, and I had enough, it's about an inch in the back there, I had enough of an inch so that they were far enough away from the edge that they didn't hit. And then like I said, stuff like this is much easier to make in bulk because I could just go through and rip all the plywood, go through and put dados in all of the pieces, and then just assemble assemble all those pieces. So I'm just ripping, this is oak that I had laying around once again from another project. I didn't wanna buy a bunch of stuff for this. You can go through, mark them out, um, find center, and then, and then drill all those holes and cut them out with the jigsaw. I'm not gonna show a bunch of the jigsaw work because um, you kind of get the gist at this point. You can see how the pots are gonna sit about halfway down, all of them. And they're all different dimensions, so you can see I'm marking which ones are which. And then once they're cut out, I, I keep them together because it's easier to cut them out in the jigsaw when they're together. I could just use the chop saw to cut them out. And same thing with the dado. I cut a dado in one big, one big plank, and then I could cut the plank down as well. So it's much easier when you, you piece it out this way. And then same thing for the, the long span of French cleat, just piece everything out. You could set up stops for this sort of stuff, but I don't mind cutting them that way either. 
and then I kind of picked which plants were going to go with which pots. I have my stack here and then I could just start assembling them. Same exact process as before. The glue is enough to hold all these pieces, but like I said, I'm a little impatient. So um, I did put screws and glue as well. I don't think I film it, but you will notice the edge of the plywood, you could veneer to hide it. But um, in this sort of circumstance, all I decided to do was to paint it black so that I could, um, I kind of liked the way it looked. It made it a little bit more stylish and then it didn't look like a rough plywood edge as much. But like I said, I don't think I filmed that. And I also coat these with Osmo oil, which I also do not think I filmed. And then, like I said earlier on smaller ones, you can, um, use a whole saw. Now I know whole saws goes up fairly large, but the bigger ones can be um, a little, they, they do like to pull drills out of your hand. So I would recommend using them clamped um, in a drill press, but these I believe were three inches. So I had a three inch hole saw and I just hole sawed these out. So they, they were nice clean holes. And like I said, my jigsaw, I only have a thicker blade on there, so I probably wouldn't have been able to cut these tighter circles with the whole with the jigsaw anyway. You just make sure I don't have any tear on the bottom, even though I have a backer clamp uh, it's clamped to the table. I usually flip it right before the whole saw is about to come out the back side, and it also makes it easier to remove the plug from the whole saw. And that is what the, the holders for the succulents will look like. So you can really get creative. Of, you can make these as decorative as you want to. I didn't want them super decorative, but there's the plant wall. And I like that you can, it's it's changeable. And um, the lights right now, they, they seem to be working quite well. I know they're usually recommended for overhead, which isn't really an option here, but I might have to um, move them a little bit. It looks like they're only hitting the wall, but in real life, they, they do hit all the plants.